Hello Beats friends, here I am with the video tutorial about the tubular herringbone as I promised but before this tutorial I want to talk about an Italian community a very big Italian community about music uh, this is called Music Off, Music Online for Free and I have the t-shirt of Music Off, yeah! <laughs> and mm, she is Daisy, she is the, the cow, the mascot of Music Off and um, if you love music, um, if you are a guitar player, if you play music, take a look at this YouTube channel, Italian YouTube channel, and also take a look at this uh, website www.musicoff.com because uh, on the website and also on the YouTube channel uh, you can find some information about some particular instruments for um, playing music uh, maybe in the specific you can find some instruments to play guitar particular instrument because some of these instruments are handcrafted and made in Italy so something really specific okay um, on the YouTube channel of Music Off you can find the Italian videos with English subtitles but if you need some more information don't worry go on the website www.musicoff.com contact Thomas and don't worry because he speaks English very very well so <laughs> he can answer you okay now that's all enjoy the tutorial enjoy the video and see you soon on the next one bye bye for this tubular herringbone I'm using um, a John James needle, size 10 and then for the thread I'm using Naimo the size is 0.20mm for uh, the diameter I hope that the, this way of saying the, the size 0.20mm is the right way and if it's not correct please tell me which is the right way to say it, ok? <laughs> Now, I'm using uh, seed beads, the size is 11, uh, because for my tubular or spiral works I prefer to use seed beads, while for my flat works I prefer to use delicate beads, but it's the same. If you use delicate beads for your tubular or spiral works, maybe your work will be not so compact, ok? Maybe there will be a lot of free spaces in your work so it's up to you to decide which kind of beads you want to use for your work in particular these seed beads are by Miyuki size 11 and this is the number of the color 0650 pick up 4 beads let's start <laughs> and then carry them to the end of the thread in this way. Then sew through the first couple of beads. Now, if you prefer, you can sew through these four beads several times to fix the thread. Sometimes I fix the thread in this way, while other times I go on adding my beads and when I have completed the base part of my work I fix the thread, it's the same. And how do I fix the thread? I fix the thread sewing through the beads several times. Okay. Now I pick up another couple of beads and I sew through the couple of beads I came out from. This is the couple of beads I came out from. You see, this is the thread. And so I sew through this couple of beads. Because I have to create several columns, okay? And the number of columns is related to the number of the beads that we want as a base for our tubular herringbone. In this case, for example, I want to make a tubular herringbone with 8 beads as a base. Ok, so I have to create 8 columns composed by a couple of beads. Now, before adding another couple of beads and before creating another column, 
I have to sew through the couple of beads that I have just added to my work in this way. It's really very, very simple. Okay, now I'm ready to add another couple of beads. Now I've just picked up another couple of beads and then I sew through the couple of beads I came out from this way. And then I sew through the couple of beads I've just added to my work in this way. And so I repeat these steps for other three times. The number of the beads that we're going to use as a base for our tubular herringbone must be even. That's very, very important. Uh, the number must be even and not odd. So, you can have a tubular herringbone with 6 or 8 beads as a base, even 10 if you want, but not 5, not 7, okay? I have created these seven columns uh, composed by a couple of uh, seed beads. Then I pick up the last couple of seed beads, always size 11, and then I sew through uh, the couple of beads I came out from in this way. Then I sew through uh, the last couple of beads I just added to my work. And then I have to close this work to create a tubular work. So I sew through the first couple of beads in this way. If you are coming out from the bottom part of the work, you have to sew through the couple of beads in this way, in this direction. Okay? While if you come out from the upper part of this couple of beads, you have to sew through the beads in the opposite direction, from the upper part to the bottom part, okay? So, sew through the couple of beads, uh, the last couple of beads you added to your work in this way, and so you're going to close your work, and in this way you create a tubular shape, a tubular form, Okay, you see. Now, if you want, you can fix uh, the thread, and for fixing the thread, you have to sew through the couple of beads without adding any new bead. Now, we have finished the base part of this tubular herringbone, and we have to start adding new beads. So, pick up a couple of beads. And then, with your needle, sew through the next bead, but just one bead, of the next column. I'm coming out from this bead, and then I sew through the first bead of the next column in the opposite direction. Then, sew through the first bead of the next column, always in the opposite direction in this way. And so you are ready to add new beads. Pick up a couple of beads and then sew through the first bead of the next column. This one. It's re really very simple. Then sew through the first bead of the next column. In this way. And repeat the same steps. Pick up a couple of beads and sew through the first bead of the next column in this way. And sew through the first bead of the next column in the opposite direction in this way. Now we have to add the last couple of beads of this round. So I pick up a couple of beads. Then I sew through the first bead of the next column in this way. And now we have to sew through the second bead of the next column because we have finished this round. And so 
to be ready to start another round we have to shoot through the couple of beats okay and this bead is the first bead that we add on this new round you see it's really very simple maybe it's harder to say it than to do it <laughs> trust me now we are ready to make another round and we have to repeat the same steps so pick up a couple of beads and then sew through the first bead of the next column and sew through the first bead of the next column in the opposite direction and then you have to repeat these steps three other times so that you complete this round too if you want to <coughs> work faster you can always pick up a couple of beads and then when you have to sew through the two first beads of the next two columns you can sew through this couple of beads in this way okay because sewing through the beads in this way it's the same than sewing through the first piece of the next column and then sew through the first bead of the next column in the opposite direction you see so to work faster i pick up the couple of beads and then i sew through uh, the first bead of the next two columns in this way just a little trick <laughs> Remember, when you have to add the last couple of beads of the round, you have to sew through the first bead of the next column and you have to sew through the couple of beads of the next column, okay? In this way, the round is finished and now you are ready to start another round. As you see, I added uh, several rounds of beads and now I want to show you how to close your work when you have reached the length that, that you want. Now, to close your work, you have just to sew through the first bead of the next column without adding any new bead. Okay, so just sew through and then sew through the first bead of the next column in this way <coughs> you have to do the same steps but without adding new beads it's very simple and the same here the first bead of the next column in the opposite direction and I repeat the same steps for the last time <coughs> in this way you have close your work and then to fix the thread you can make some note but in my experience it's better not making notes uh, I prefer just sewing through uh, all the beads several times until I feel that the thread is fixed on my work okay and these are the same steps that you have to do if you need to add new thread to go on with your work so if you need to add new thread on your work you have to close the work maybe you don't need uh, to sew in through all the beads of the last round because uh, you have to go on with your work so um, it's not important to fix uh, all the beads of the last round but you close the work as uh, you went through uh, all the beads uh, several several times until you feel uh, that the thread is fixed on your work then you cut the thread and you add new thread on your work always sewing through the beads with uh, your new thread many many times until you feel that the thread is fixed and then you can go on adding new bits, okay? So for now that's all and see you soon on the next video. Bye!